this section we're talking about the power rule and your definition for a power rule is the top line that you see here um, where you have f of x g prime of x plus f prime of x plus g prime of x. Um, so that's the definition way but I usually do a shortcut way and so you see my notation right here let me put that in red so I'm asking you the derivative and I've labeled it as function 1 function 2 here for you and so the way that I say it is 1 d2 plus 2 d1 1 d2 plus 2 d1 so that means 1 function 1 times the derivative of the second function plus function 2 times the derivative of the first function and so that's a little bit easier way to remember it and I've tried to label it the best that I can without you so since you're not sitting in front of me um, I've tried to label it the best I can it's just function 1 times derivative of second plus function 2 times derivative of first so what I mean by this little notation here is function 1 so see if that helps a little now you're going to use this when you have a product so for this one, I ask you to find the derivative of this product. Now, of course, you could FOIL this out and then take the derivative, and that is one option, and you certainly could do it that way. But since I'm trying to teach you the uh, product rule, I'm going to work it by the product rule. So function 1 is going to be 2x squared plus 1. And function 2 is going to be 3x plus 4. Now, d1 is the derivative of this first function. So this derivative would be 4x. d2 would be der the derivative of this second function, which would be 3. Okay, Using your power rule and your constant rule there. So when you get ready to take the derivative of this overall function, you're going to say, let me write it out, 1 d2 plus 2 d1 okay so function 1 is 2x squared plus 1 d2 is 3 function 2 is 3x plus 4 and d1 is 4x And so that's how you would put it together. 1 d2 plus 2 d1. Now, of course, you'd want to clean it up after that. So this first one, I'm going to distribute the 3. So I get 6x squared plus 3. And the second one, I'm going to distribute a 4x. So I get 12x squared plus 16x. Cleaning that up, I'd get an 18x squared plus 16x plus 3. That would be my overall result. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so I ask you to find this derivative. I do see two functions. My first function is x to the eighth plus 3. And my second function is 5x squared plus 3x plus 1. Let's take the derivative of both. So the derivative of this first one would be 8x to the 7th. And the derivative of the second one would be 10x plus 3. Now if you have trouble finding those derivatives, you need to look back at previous videos and previous lectures where we did the uh, power rule. Okay, so when I get ready to take the derivative using the product rule, I'm going to say function 1 d2, which means derivative of the second, plus function 2 d1 derivative of the first. 1 d2 plus 2 d1. And then we can just simplify it. So if I distribute here, in other words, I'm going to FOIL. So I get 10 x to the ninth plus 3 x to the eighth 
plus 30x plus 9. And over here we'll distribute the 8, so we get 40x to the 9th plus 24x to the 8th plus 8x7. Looking for like terms, I've got 50x to the 9th. I have 27x to the 8th. I have 8x to the 7th plus 30x plus 9. Nothing else simplifies. And that's what I get. Let me write this down real fast. Okay, so let's try one more of these and then we'll change gears. So here's our next one. Yeah, there, there are definitely way, other ways to work this one. So you can use the, uh, the product rule. You can also multiply through a t to the one half and work it that way as well. Since we're in the product rule section, that's the way that I'm going to work it. But just know, other ways would work too. So function one is 3t squared plus 2t minus 1. And function two is the square root of t. Now that should say function two. Let me change that. Got a little ahead of myself. Now you can't work a derivative with the square root of t, so you have to rewrite it. So this would be t to the one half, because remember this index right here, two, that's the denominator of your fractional exponent. So now let's go back and take the derivatives. We would get 6t plus two, and over here, your derivative would be one half t to the one half minus one, which would be one half t to the negative one half. Now I think there's, there's different ways to work it. I think I'm going to leave it as t to the negative one half right now. Okay, so when I get ready to take the derivative, I get function one d2. plus function two, d1. One d2 plus two d1. Now over here, I'm gonna multiply through. So I get three halves t Remember when I'm uh, multiplying with like bases, I add the exponents. So two minus one half, okay, two minus one half would be four halves minus one half, which would be three halves. So this would be three halves t to the three halves. Okay, multiply my second one, I would get one in front. Two times one half would give me one. And t and t to the negative one half would be t to the one half minus one-half t to the negative one-half. Okay, so that's what I get with the first one. Looking at the second one, when I multiply this t to the one-half through, I get 6t, I add the exponents, one plus one-half gives me three-halves, and then I get a 2t to the one-half. Okay, combining my like terms, I have t to the three-halves here and here. So if I add those coefficients, I have a 3 halves plus 6. My common denominator would be 2, and 6 would be 12 halves with a common denominator of 2. So that would give me 15 halves, t to the 3 halves. You have a plain t right here and here, t to the 1 half. So that would be 1 and 2 more would be 3, t to the 1 half minus one-half t to the negative one-half. Now that we're at our final answer, we can clean up that negative exponent, clean up that negative exponent. 
my only negative exponent was over here on the back, so that t to the one-half can go to the bottom. And that would be my answer. Now, there are all different variations of this answer. That, of course, would give you full credit, uh, but you also could get a common denominator, and so you, there were other possible answers, uh, correct answers that you could get for that one. So on this one, I've worked it out the product rule way. If you look at your written notes for this that you'll see in your online course, I'll also work it out the other way for you so that you can see it worked out both ways. Uh, whichever way you prefer would be fine.